Here we are. Here we are. Yeah, so she's rather silver now that she's been... Like I said, gray and wrinkled like me. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I guess this is one of those questions you're probably just going to smile at me in for. Maybe. They removed all the, the fancy bits, yes. shall we say. Yes. So she's not as pointy as she, she once was. Correct. But what, what are the things that we should look out for when we actually get to see one of these things that you are allowed to talk about as we as we go around it? Well, um, I think it was, it's along the lines of one of the things you said during the interview is that it doesn't look like an airplane. <laughs> um, even look standing here looking at it, it still doesn't look like an airplane. Um, and that's because stealth was the number one consideration. So just, I guess, look at the diamond shapes Mm -hmm. All those diamond shapes, that's just one aspect of of the stealth of it. But they, they've thought about, if you think, if you look at everything that's supposed to be, that would normally be like square or curved, it's pointy. Yep. Uh, look at the gear doors. Look at the, that panel right there. Uh, look at the, the leading edge of the canopy. Um, even the, the intakes. They're, everything has a slant to it and a, a pitch to it that's meant to prevent radar from coming back to its source. So nothing flat enough to give it a, a, a straight return. Essentially. Yeah. One question I had, the Bombay doors though were quite square, weren't they? Nope. Were they not? Okay. No, you can, if you kneel down, you can see them right there. Oh yeah. Oh, and they do have the, they, they've got the, the serrated, the, the serrated, the serrated edges on, on, on the front. On the as well. Yeah. It, oh, it, it's very pretty, even for something that's ungainly. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It. It. it uh, we used to say that when you look at it from the front, it looks like Darth Vader. You know, it just... <laughs> so, I'm. I'm just very aware that you're going to smile at me for a few of these questions. Right? Not at all. But, uh, but not at all. What sort of? This is a very technical one. As you're flying, you're saying you're going to make minimal movements as you could. What sort of angle of banks would you be making your turns at when you're within radar coverage? As little as possible. So just little gentle turns as you're going, yeah. nothing, nothing fancy. And what does, I, I guess you're listening constantly for anything that the sensors are picking up. Are you actually hearing very much or what, what, what can you tell that you know you need to maybe change your profile slightly? Um, well, there's the, the whole problem is there's not much you can do about it. Okay. So <laughs> you tend to just kind of say, well, Quesera, <laughs> or quesera if you're speaking in Spanish. Um, so, yeah, you just you kind of knew where where things were supposed to be, but the problem with a mobile battlefield, you know, if somebody has a mobile SAM, they could be anywhere. Yeah. So that was part of the problem. Is like, well, we we took our best whack at it, and we're just going to follow this line and go see what happens. So when you were hot prepping the aircraft. On the walk rounds, what would you be looking looking for for things that might be out of shape? Because you know, a, a standard walk round, you're going, yeah, checking checking the control surfaces, things like that. For an aircraft like this, what additionally are you looking? Well, for? Well, first of all, that there there's no dents or dings, you mm -hmm. know, nothing that's going to affect the the RCS, the radar yeah. cross section. Um, so you, in that respect, it's just sort of a standard walk around. Um, everything's where it should be. Um, the tires, like those tires, obviously are not serviceable. <laughs> um, they've seen a few too many landings, things like that. Um, but then you, more specifically, the, in, in this case, the, the bays would be open. You could access the weapons. Mm -hmm. um, there were certain settings that were supposed to be on that weapon that were geared for whatever target um, that aircraft was going after. And so then... The walk around itself was fairly fairly quick, but then get in, start the engines, spin everything up, and everything is does everything work? Mm -hmm. Is everything as it should be? Um, so literally at that point, I could just have them pull the chocks and go fly the mission. Right. Okay. So that that's that's what we tried to get it to to minimize the chance of the, the guy coming out getting in and going, oh, this didn't work. Mm -hmm. If there was any chance of us catching it beforehand, that that was what my job was and it mostly had to do with the internal you know yeah. all the brains and you know all the boxes were doing what yeah. the boxes should be doing yeah so take off hit a tanker mm -hmm. and then form up and and head in would you be going in on on your own or would you have friends with you um we we generally flew as a two ship uh, when we left mm -hmm. and but uh 
essentially once you once you were crossing the line, you were on your own. Okay. Um, and you weren't talking to anybody. You'll notice there's a distinct lack of projections even from this old girl. Uh, they're there, and you have to look a little bit closely to see them, but uh, they're there. But essentially, you sucked it all in, and it it was very quiet and peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> just became about a hole, hole in the sky. About an hour and a half to two hours of just per peace and quiet until everybody started shooting. Yeah. So we, we, were, we were saying after we finished chatting in the other room, it was about a seven-hour seven hour ish, yeah. ish round about that. Yeah. Let's get to the basics here. And by basics, I mean... What happens if you need to use the loo? Uh, piddle pack. <laughs> it's it's basically a little Ziploc bag with a dehydrated sponge. Mm. And um, luckily this airplane, the autopilot was quite good. So you could just turn on the autopilot and go on about your about your business. And then um, for uh, for anything uh, more than that, you, we basically ate um, high protein, mm -hmm. you know, low residue kind yep. of foods so that you didn't have any issues until you got back. That, and then, then you had issues. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, we'll, we'll move swiftly on well, from that. You know, high protein eggs, meat, yeah. those types yeah. of things. So you then had to hydrate quite well in order to, to clear that out. For something is cutting edge. So, oh, so that's what the accessory packet B was for. <laughs> with the, with the, with the, Despite the spices. With the tabaco, yeah. Tabasco, yeah. Get things going. Yeah. With with something as as cutting edge as this, what would go wrong with it? Because it's you know it's it's something that is still I see even in operation was quite experimental. So, um, uh, just like I said, the box is not doing mm -hmm. what the box is supposed to be doing, and uh, it could be any any number of of boxes. I, I had a couple of instances where you you get off the tanker, you're going to go meet and greet somebody, and you go. Where is this thing taking me? <laughs> and then you start trying to sort that out, and it's like, well, uh, we're not going tonight because it's it doesn't want to go there. So um, I've, I've told other interviewers that uh, these things do have a personality of their own, and you have to kind of learn. It's almost like a horse or any other creature that you deal with. It's like this one doesn't like that. This one doesn't like doing this, or it doesn't want to. So how do you then convince it to do that? In some cases, there were some nights where it's like. No, we're we're not we're not going to the dance tonight. We're going home. So, so you got, got to get to know its its quirks, its own yeah, personality. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple. There was one in particular that I was after the third third time was a charm. I told the maintenance people, I said, if you give me that airplane again, I will. I was going to get out right off the end of the runway, and I'm just going to punch out of it. <laughs> They're like, you're not kidding. I said, no, I'm not kidding, <laughs> because the last three times I almost left it out somewhere in the desert, maybe with me in it, you know. So no. It's 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 fascinating to be stood next stood next to one this mm -hmm. close and seeing them put back together. She's gonna to look great when they've when they finished with her. But I guess one of the things that you 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 you're not gonna answer this really is a lot of the things that we see on the airframe now are pretty standard air, aircraft airframe structure. All the stuff that's missing is 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 the fancy stuff, um, but what level of sort of concern when you're looking at you're saying the dents and things like that? If you had a dent in the bits that aren't here now, would that increase your visibility a lot? Or it was going to change it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was hard to say if it was going to make it better or worse, but you assumed that it was going to make it worse. So then something, if it was detected early enough, we could, we'd have something yeah. done about it. But it's, I guess the sort of your philosophy of thinking of what you need to look for mm -hmm. when you're getting ready mm -hmm. is quite different because it's, yeah. Yeah. It, so yeah, this, I don't know, the, the leading edge, uh, which was essentially, if you think, if you look at it, the leading edge was a straight line from nose to the wingtip. Mm -hmm. And so I, in particular, spent a fair amount of time kind of literally going down the leading edge, just looking at, and it wasn't razor sharp, but it was, for, for a leading edge, it's pretty damn sharp. Mm -hmm. So, um, and at least for somebody my size, it was a good place to knock my head. <laughs> so hopefully no other tall guy ran into it and, and dented the, the leading edges, for instance. 
it's I've ne- I've ne- this is the first time I've I've ever seen one in mm-hmm. in the flesh and mm-hmm. it is it's quite impactful because it's all these flat panels yeah. and weird angles and they have they just they defy it defies uh explanation as an aircraft it just <laughs> that and it's one of those things where when you see it flying it, you know you see it sideways where she sees it from the bottom or the top it's a completely different shape mm. every time so you could see it three different ways and you'd think you saw three different ufos or something yeah. flying through the air it I, the thing that keeps popping into my head is it doesn't look right but it does look right mm-hmm. yeah we're saying this is this is a stealth aircraft you go well yes but yeah. then if you were to say f-16 over there which was you know a, a classically a classic fighter mm-hmm. aircraft mm-hmm. it's it, which you would probably say is aesthetically different yes i'm not going to say more or less pretty. <laughs> pleasing you're going <laughs> yeah. to use that yeah, biased but, word of pleasing but when you say you know this aircraft is literally to hide in the dark mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it looks exactly like it should do. yeah it's and, it's it, it's it's shaped for what it's meant mm-hmm. to do and that is that's the beauty of it that's yeah. its own beauty this function it's it's purpose built i can hear the affection in your voice oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's even though you're banging your head on the on the cockpit <laughs> quite a bit <laughs> yeah there may be some dents in that one i, I flew this one home from the desert I've, i landed this in uh, uh at nellis um on one april 1991 april fool's day <laughs> <laughs> what what was that transit? How long was the transit back? Was um, it one go or did you stop? No, it was, it was three three hops. Uh, Camis to Zaragoza, Zaragoza to Langley, and Langley to Nellis. And then of our, I think it was eight aircraft. I can't remember how many airplanes we brought back, but uh, four of us went into Nellis. Several went to Tonopah. Several went straight to the, the depot for refurbishment. Mm-hmm. So we kind of scattered somewhere over Utah, I think, or yeah. New Mexico and sent airplanes to different locations. Because I guess they, they needed a bit of TLC when you got back because oh, you yeah. flew them hard for, the, oh, for yeah. that campaign. Yeah. Um, we, as I said, we as pilots were flying on average every other night. These things at some point were going up there twice a night. Wow. At, towards the end of the yeah. war, they were making two trips a night, Goodness. seven and a half hour-ish trips. So yeah, we, we um, it's it's almost like, you know, the, 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 you're looking at a Formula One type of machine that's being that's driving two flat out races every day mm. and think about the amount of work that goes into something like that yes versus a real formula one where you know you drive the shit out of it sorry <laughs> for the race for whatever that is two and a half hours and then it doesn't yeah. see another uh, track for a week yeah. you know? it, it's designed just to last that long yeah yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing that most people don't realize is, and even with the A10s, um, mm-hmm. when I was across the street at Davis Monthan, um, uh, even though they're not fast aircraft, we were flying those things flat out, somewhere between two and four times a day. Mm. So imagine imagine that kind of uh, TLC that needs to go into a machine to keep it in that sort of top fighting condition, yep. racing condition, however you want to state that. That's a that's that's quite a. A feather in the cap for the maintainers and the people who uh, who keep them keep them up there. Yeah, because yeah, that that's the old story. You, you guys break them and they have to put them back yep, together. Yep, yeah, yep. Well, sometimes they broke on their own. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I broke a couple, but there were some that were just bound to determine they were gonna. They just didn't want. They didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another silly question. Yes, sir. I'm very good. At so far, I, I will credit you with not having asked any silly questions. By the way, so let, let me let me try. Just, let me try. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to try harder. Okay. <laughs> Look, looking at what what should I be looking for as something that is is unique that you're allowed to talk about really because I, I know there's, okay. there's a whole bunch of sure. bits. But I'm looking right at it. Right. So right. you look in the intake here. Okay. Ramon. Yes. Look in the intake. Yes, come on, cameraman. Let's you see that. See that uh, that piece of aluminum hanging down there. Yep. So what the hell is that? Yeah. So if you walk a little closer, you look up through there, and there's daylight showing, showing on the top of the intake. Yep. So that was the blow-in door. Oh, right. So this bit right here had um, a grid across it, which mm-hmm. I f- affectionately call the ice cube trays. <laughs> so when you flew into nasty weather, and this time of, as a matter of fact, uh, we're in the anniversary season of Desert Storm right now. Yep. This is when the war was mm-hmm. going on. 
So these things would ice completely over okay. and block. And so then what would happen is the engine, of course, is going to suck air from wherever it can. So then that the the, air, the vacuum would just literally pull that door down oh, and open right. up. And then you got a light in the cockpit that said BID, blow in door. Your ICS has changed. Oh, by the way. But that bit is um, is basically just uh, uh, one of those gas struts. Okay. So then once the vacuum was less, i.e. the the ice melted, then the blow the blowing door would close, and then you ran your air through the normal inlet. So you, you that would all happen on on its own as as the pressure changed yes. in the, the icing would yeah. too. That yeah. would happen automatically as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this uh, bit right here is going to look familiar for anybody who has a car. This is where your your uh, wiper went. There was a wiper that went in this channel that you could turn it on, and it would try to clear the stuff off the uh, the inlet. Uh, but so it was. A big it, windshield wiper. It, an incredibly stealthy secret airplane with windshield wipers over the inlet. Yes. Yeah. They weren't stealthy when you used them, so you had to be <laughs> very kind of, uh, you know, judicious about how you did that. But, uh, and I'll say it didn't work worth a damn. <laughs> it looked like a licorice snow cone. <laughs> if you if there is a black, the black licorice, mm -hmm. All I would do is I'd have a flashlight and I'd shine the light down on the intake and you could see out the window and it's like, oh, Jesus, you know, this dark um, ice gob on the, on the front of this thing. And I, I guess that's the other question with icing on on all the usual places that icing mm -hmm. is usually on angles, pointy bits. You've got a lot of angles and pointy bits on this. Yeah. How I guess icing was one of your big your big worries on, on a normal flight. Or? Um. It, it was, but it was, uh, I mean, I don't know what icing does to the RCS. I don't yeah. think it changes. It's just, well, it's just that, water. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, the aerodynamics, the aerodynamics were secondary to stealth. Mm. So if you go back, let's go back to the, the, the wing line here, and you can kind of see the lack of curvature, but you can see the airfoil, if you want to call it that. Mm. And um, so it probably wouldn't take much to disrupt the airflow over this um again diamond shaped um bit right here so still looking down the leading edge if you back up a little bit more you can see there's just it goes from a slope to a flat oh i can see I yeah know. oh it's, yeah you're tall <laughs> <laughs> and then it slopes back down again mm -hmm. so um again it's not a classic airfoil shape not a classic yeah. airfoil shape and therefore probably subject to uh, disruption by something like icing pretty easily but I, I, again it's you just cope with that and as needs be yeah 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 well the, and you weren't asking a lot out of it you yeah know, again you're being fairly sneaky about it so you know if you had done some kind of some kind of hayaka turn you might have gotten a rude surprise yeah. from that but we weren't asking of asking that of the aircraft thing things like recovery yeah you know, we were talking earlier about in training spinning things if this went into a spin, <laughs> <laughs> was I guess that's big trouble. Nope. Yep. Nope. You, Don't you, do it. Yeah. You pull the yellow handles and there take was a, the term wobbling goblin. Wobbly goblin was there for a reason. So mm -hmm. some of the early on guys got to experience that. Oh, right. I, I never did, and I never did want to. So, so you treat treat it nice, and it treats yeah. you nice. Yeah. I, I've always been fascinated by the um, the uh, the. Oh, of course, I'm on camera. Tailpipe? Tailpipe, yeah. yeah. It being flat. Which is not a pipe, by the it's, way. It's, <laughs> it's kind of a harmonica yeah. shape. And yeah. it's, that's always seemed a, a very strange structure for that. Because, you know, we're, we're surrounded by all kinds of jets of, of different yeah. shapes. Oh, the one thing that they all have in common is a, a round pipe at the back. Mm -hmm. Whereas here we've got a big rectangular slot. Yeah. That, I guess, again, for radar cross-section. Well, not but, just for radar cross-section, but for uh, infrared. Ah, yes. D diffusion as well. So we're, it's, and I, I guess that's how they then were able to, to track them a bit later over over the Balkans, wasn't it? it was something, something like, again, I'm getting, the I'm getting the smile. Uh, Beats me. Yes, um, there's, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. That guy's but, a friend of mine, by the way. But. Oh, right. Yeah. It's, um, it's just a, an, another sort of aspect where everything is going to, yeah. the, fun the form is going straight exactly. to the function. Exactly. Mm -hmm. what, did, he, did it notice, was it noticeable? that you had like something like this coming out did that mean flight characteristics or was it just so different to normal that you just got used to the whole thing as a package or um, were you noticing 
little quirks on it. Which... Just just the overall lack of thrust. Yeah. I mean, the, the engine itself was a TF404, mm -hmm. so uh, same engine in, as in the F18. Yep. Not after burning, of course. But um, I credit that as being a pretty damn good engine. Mm -hmm. um, I know that it eats ice. It, it just <laughs> it just ate the, the, the dickens out of it. But, um, yeah, when you take the round pipe that feeds out of the 404 and then you step on it, step on the beer can and flatten it out, uh, you're going to lose efficiency. You're going to lose thrust. And so, but it just became part and parcel of operating the aircraft. It was under thrusted, or at least it was at the altitudes we were operating. So you just, you know, acted accordingly. Yep. Even from this angle, it, this is, this angle is very science fictiony. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is, you know, Battlestar Galactica sort of, sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. It, it must have been pretty cool having this as the day job. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was there, there there's other there's other cool things just to, to illustrate so right there that silver piece yep. that's uh, where the drag chute goes okay so um you notice that there's there's two whatever the hell they were called uh flapperons or flapper doodles or something <laughs> um but they that would that was there was two of these on each wing and the tail fins and that's it Yep. Uh, as far as flaps or speed brakes, there was, there was no drag devices. So mm -hmm. once you hit the ground, and oh, by the way, these brakes were not the world's greatest, that drag chute better work. Um, otherwise, you were either um, going to heat the, you know, probably going to blow the tires or you were going to go into the barrier to uh, to get stopped. So very dependent on, on old technology drag chutes mm -hmm. to make it work. So fully loaded with... Minimal, minimal flappage as well. I guess you had to be going some to get it off the off the ground. So you got oh uh, yeah, mi um, min minimal thrust and what what sort of were you rotating? Um, at? It was it was very it was similar to the A10 actually. Yeah. Um, the only time it got sporting was uh, <clears throat> if you if you didn't drop and you came back and you had a pretty heavy fuel load, mm -hmm. and then you were in a pretty high speed tricycle once you landed on the on the. Uh, on the runway. I will say that I would I would give a Formula One car a run for its money <laughs> on one of the two landing rolls that I did that were Oof. like much faster than I really cared to <laughs> with three wheels. Oof. With three wheels. And not very big wheels either. No. Yeah. So they're spinning very that little that little nose wheel is going at a high RPM at close to two hundred knots. <laughs> I, this again, another silly question. No, you're still over. No, I'm, I'm, however many. You're being very nice to me, John. That's, that's fair. <laughs> All aircraft have their own sort of sounds and things that you're, you're listening mm -hmm. out for. Mm -hmm. What what was it like flying in this? Because I would assume the airflow over it would be making quite different noises to a normal aircraft. Were you listening out for anything in particular, for say a, 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 a sensor door open that shouldn't be, or something flapping? Would you would you know that in the cockpit, or were you quite quiet and tucked away? Up there? It was pretty quiet and tucked away. I'm I'm think I'm having to think back. I'm try, I'm going back in time, you know, decades to go. Well, you know, like um, one of the one of the things, especially at night mm -hmm. or over the middle of the ocean, you know, one of the things that gets you get your attention is the hydraulic accumulator mm -hmm. uh, in certain aircraft because it it goes kachunk as as it recharges itself after you've used like a if you put the gear down or something. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't recall there being a whole lot of, of very much of anything, uh, sound-wise, with this thing. It, um, it remarkably, as as goofy as all these angles look like, this is a very sleek design, and it would, it would, it would go fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, upper, you know, high subsonic, but um, it liked to go fast. Mm -hmm. If you slowed down, then it would kind of start to. It was like a speedboat, so then you got to. You're up on the plane, and yeah. then, uh, but it wouldn't give you a whole lot of departure characteristics or anything like that. And like I said, I was never very curious to discover what those were. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just blown away by this, and I can't thank you enough for again You're spending welcome. a bit of time pointing out some some sure. bits on your old bird, and of sure. course the bits that we're not allowed to talk about, which aren't here. Yeah, yeah. There we are. But she looks great with the tail on, and yeah. even even yeah. with the leading edge. Not, not here yet, and yeah, uh, it, yeah it it looks yeah you're right it looks like it's going fast even though it's sitting yeah. down again yeah. so so thank you so much you're welcome.